sandwiches. Welcome everybody to the Lunch Table Podcast with Dylan and Akram, where we digest the latest in entertainment. And speaking of digest, we're serving up a hot review of FX new show, The Bear, starring Jeremy Allen White, who played Lip Gallagher in Shameless. This show, uh, I gotta say, I, I got nothing but good things to say about it. Um, Akram, start us off with uh, what, what you thought about it. Oh yeah, it, man, this is a beautiful show. It reminded me of like a Kitchen Nightmares version of uh, Whiplash. It, it was really great, really intense. Cinematography here was amazing. And, and, and I think that probably students in the future can watch the show and take classes on cinematography. Um, here you can really see it's it's an art form and I think the acting was so authentic between everybody and the evolution of characters it was very beautiful and I think a, a real well put together show so what did you think about it? Yeah I mean it was great um, as someone who lived in Chicago and actually you know worked in, in restaurants in that area for a while um, I kind of appreciated this show even more because it is it's very bitter and honest and I like that it doesn't try to glorify the food industry like it's a very like real tale of like people just trying to go about their lives in a kitchen, you know, day to day, like struggling just to make ends meet. I think Jeremy Allen White, uh, his performance was so good. Like I think he trained for like two weeks mm -hmm. and like he actually worked in like a proper kitchen uh, just to prep for the show. And it, it really shows in this show. I think I think he was he was so honest about it. Um, but the rest of the cast was great, too. I, I, I love all the actors and actresses. Um, yeah, it, it's such a, it reminds me of um, if anyone's ever seen the movie Burnt with uh, Bradley Cooper. Uh, it's kind of like the opposite of, of that. It's like instead of a uh, very pristine. Actually, it reminds me it reminds me of an anime I watched too, um called Food Wars. But it's like the, the opposite. It's like in that show, it's like this young kid starts off working in a diner and then he starts working in more pristine like kitchens. But in this show, it's like it takes like the foil of that it's like like Jeremy plays like this, this uh, very like classically trained chef uh, called Carmi. And he's working in this like low end restaurant in like the suburbs of Chicago where they kind of like serve like sandwiches and stuff. And I thought that was a great concept, actually. I, I really feel like that's and it, it was such a good story, too, because it wasn't just about them trying to make ends meet. It was also it had like a bigger story behind it like he was dealing with stuff like with his brother and like you know trying to trying to keep the peace like in such a stressful environment um but it talks a lot about change and i, I i'm gonna explore that deeper but I, I really feel like this whole show talked about like transformation of like how how much we're like willing to open up uh to new experiences um but yeah tell me more like what did you think of like like seeing like all the actors like how did what did you think like because uh, I don't know if you're like really into like cooking shows or anything or like what did you think about it? No, yeah. It, I mean, again, it was very authentic. And I think that added to the intensity and also uh, like dangerous aspects too, like knife work and whatnot. Um, Jeremy Allen White's character, I feel like talked about him for like a second because that's a nuanced character um, and also tragic, you know, coming from this background where like he's classically trained chef um, um, and kind of like it, it seems like he's it's it's unfortunate what happened to his brother because uh there's a famous actor that's actually his portraying his brother john bernthal uh which is funny because ebon moss's uh character richard um they both starred in the Punisher. micro yeah so that yeah. was really funny to see but i feel like it's sad because um you know it talks a lot about suicide um i think a lot of people can relate to that I think also Addiction. it's like right and and it's looking like to to I wouldn't say father figures per se but like somebody you look up to and I guess he kind of looked up to his brother a little bit they even had, are like rocking tattoos you know uh, which is kind of weird to see like a well now it's kind of you know like the norm I see a lot of like classically trained chefs have tattoos and stuff but like to see that I thought it was really sweet and it just uh added to the fact that his brother committed suicide um and and a lot of people think like with suicide, you know, it's a very selfish thing. Um, but what the brother did at the end of the at the end of the season um, was contrary to being selfish. It was very beautiful, very sad. That's why I felt like so tearful. Um, I felt like to cry a lot of a lot of moments in the show because um, it was really authentic and it spoke to like a lot of stuff personally. Um, so yeah, yeah, it was very beautiful in that regard. I, I agree. Like. Yeah, it, it spoke so much about it was it was very humanizing, like a lot of the characters like we saw, like 
I don't know. It, it, it didn't make them seem like they were, you know, they were just there like employees, just like, you know, clocking in and out, just doing their jobs. Like, like each character I felt like had very personal moments where it's like they're, they're struggling to find their place in this new kind of regime in this restaurant. Um, Cause a lot of kitchens are like that. A lot of, I've seen like kitchens where, you know, people kind of had their own like duties and their own departments and, and they kind of want to stick to their ways. Right. And they don't want to, adapt right especially like richie's character like he's i think he's part of this um well he's he he co-founded the restaurant with with carmy's brother so he's kind of like stuck in in that that era i guess also because like you know he, i think he doesn't want to let go of um the brother michael so i think for him to to open up and try a carmy's way uh i think that was a beautiful thing because uh I, his character was like he was such an asshole in the beginning but then i i started warming up to him because you find out like there's there's more to him you know there's layers like his daughter you know he's stuff he's going through he's he's going through like you know stuff himself where he's like he's trying to like sell cocaine just to keep this place afloat so he does he does have like like a misguided sense of like love for this place too but he just does it in his own way and i thought it was funny so funny like <laughs> when they were fighting over like the cigarettes like mm -hmm. on top of the stove too that was such like a it's like a funny moment it's like because a lot of people can like relate to that it's like sometimes we have just we have like a like a oh shit moment we're like you know, we we think we were perfect, but then we we realize um sometimes we mess up in our own regards. But yeah, it was it was a great thing. I think um Sydney, the actress who played her, was great. Yeah. Um, because uh, she, she plays she plays the uh, the stagiaire, so she's kind of like this novice. Um, I felt at times she kind of annoyed me though, because I felt like sometimes she was she she couldn't read the room very well. Mm. Like I feel like she was trying so hard to push elements faster than than carmy could keep up sometimes because like he's he's trying to keep this place afloat and i think she was trying to rush the process a little bit but what did you think of her character no i thought she was she was really funny actually it's it's funny to see like that contrast of characters between her and tina um tina was was annoying me at first a little bit too i was like damn this bitch <laughs> oh yeah she was petty i was like yeah, oh shit she, when she turned the stove on i was like, oh shit <laughs> i know no but i i found it so sweet that tina like she came to the realization and she kind of like was humbled by her experiences, especially mm -hmm. interacting with Sydney and, and she listened more to Sydney. Um, and I think that also Marcus, I think it's, re it's really nice, you know, because mm -hmm. that's the thing. The restaurant is not just a, it's not just a business. It's kind of like a, a home or, or, you know, home is where the heart is as, as cheesy as that sounds. It, it's kind of like their heart, you know, and it gives them something to focus um, and it gave Marcus something to focus on, especially, um, you know, he talked about his his uh, short lived, I guess, career in, in McDonald's. Right. Mm -hmm. And him coming here, he's like trying to be better, you know, one up the bakery and, and try to uh, add something to all this gourmet food that Carmen is trying to uh, produce. So I thought that was really sweet. Um, the little uh, brother and sister dynamic, too, um, also like keeps reminding us of how much of a burden uh is the restaurant which it's really tragic because like you're trying to do better you have this gaping hole of depth um and and you're just trying to make this restaurant live on because you're closer to your brother that way i think it's really sad but yeah tell us what you thought about um sydney in general because i think sydney's an interesting character because she's she's the sous chef right so you were in a, you were working in the kitchen mm -hmm. before so i guess you have some experience with that yeah i think i think well i liked her character i think uh she definitely plays like a good stagiaire. Like it's it's harder when you're younger because you're trying to, you know, impress your your head chef. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's also times where like you have you have responsibilities thrown on you because the head chef is trying to do so many other things and keep you know, because they're also like a manager too. They're not just a chef, right? So I think it was really accurate, like how they showed like 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 how Carmi gave her like a lot of more responsibilities. He's trying to like test test her in this kitchen. And I think she really she she stood up and, you know, she was able to get things done. And I I, I agree. I, I like the scenes with like her and like with Tina and Marcus and the rest of the the staff. I thought that was cool. Um because she's like they're I think they're so like abrasive to her at first because they're they kind of like see her as like somebody who's just trying to like step on their toes and like ruin their their as as Richie says, their ecosystem. <laughs> um but she's trying her best to like you know adapt and like like bring bring about change um yeah i agree i like i like marcus's character too i think that was cool it was like like carmy was like 
he was kind of like educating him in a way. He's like he's like trying to bring like some finer lessons into his life, and I thought that was really cool. It's like because it, yeah, when he was talking about like how he was working at McDonald's and he didn't really have any room for like creativity, um, so it's like it's like Carmi is like nudging him and like pushing his 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 creative talent. Um, I thought that was so cool, especially like because like Chicago is like so known. It has like a such rich history and and culture, and a lot of that is like uh, tied together by food. Like food is such like a big thing. Like a like Italian beef sandwich is like like our Philly cheesesteak. Like it's such like a staple. But like pastries and like donuts, um, that's also like a big thing too. Like I remember there was a restaurant like downtown called a uh, Fire Cakes. They made these really like good donuts. Um, so a lot of a lot of their their problems like or a lot of their you know the issues they they try to resolve it around like cooking because it's their passion right it's like something that you know they it's a purpose for them you know it, it gets them through the day um yeah it was a wonderful show what, what did you think also of like 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 his monologue like when he was in the rehab yeah because that was such a good scene that was great that was like a seven minute monologue that was wonderful i think i i think he should probably be nominated for an emmy I think so. I think that was that was Emmy uh, worthy. Um, that was really beautiful uh, because it was really, he, you know, he's he's finally unfolding these traumas and, and giving us, the audience, the full picture. Because for the most part, everything is very hectic and we're kind of given like these little cryptic uh, dialogue sequences where it's like we're, we're figuring out as the story goes by. And plus, they're really short episodes, too. So you never really get a time to like breathe. So here it's like, you know, he's just laying it all out. Um, and it's very it's a very complex issue. And I think it's very realistic. I think, you know, it's it's not really black and white here. It's it's really gray. Um, and I think it also like touch notes on how Carmi treats uh, the chefs in the kitchen as well. And like and then plus we see flashbacks of of him in the kitchen and somebody was berating him while he was trying to prepare a dish. And and the fact that he's trying to give other people chances and, and he's he's recalling like his experiences with his brother. Um, and I think it just ties in the ending uh, a lot more. Um, I think it makes it more impactful and my favorite word, more endearing. Uh, what did you think about it? Yeah, unfortunately, that's the nature of the food industry. Like you have to be you have to be quick, but you can't like like talk shit to like your chef. Like that's why like at certain moments I was like, this wasn't really like 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 when Sydney was like, bad mouthing like Carmi like that wouldn't happen like you'd be fired like on the spot like you have to be professional at every level and I think this show also did a good job of portraying what it's like in the kitchen as well like um like they kept saying like corner that's that's like etiquette for like a kitchen like every time you walk through a door you have to say corner otherwise if you bump into someone and you drop shit you know that's that's time wasted right so you spend more time trying to get ingredients back than than cooking right um yeah, it was such a great portrayal too, and I love I love the cinematography as well. I think the show I love the the shots where like we see like in the into the kitchen and like we're like following people like like we're kind of like part of the the restaurant too. So it's like we're part of the staff. We get to see what goes on, and I think this the show also did a great job of showing the importance of like the preparation that goes into like just a normal day of just serving food. Like they showed like like it takes like four hours just to like prep food. And like a lot of that is like, you have to be like on your game. And a lot of times too, they, they showed like, I was watching like a, a breakdown of this, the series. Like this guy was talking about like how um, a lot of times, like, you know, when you get a delivery, like sometimes they'll mess up your order. You won't have the right ingredients. So you kind of have to adapt to the menu and then, you know, you have to be like quick. So everything, everything, it's like, it's like a system, right? And cause if you lose like a single day, of business you're you're gonna drown immediately especially like this restaurant was like suffering so much already so for i think carmi was really trying to like stress the importance of like a system because they really needed it to to really get this place going um just because there were so many problems but i think i think those problems actually like i don't know it, it has like such a like a shameless vibe and i think that's why they chose jeremy just because like he was so good and shameless he kind of felt like in the show he kind of like felt like fiona <laughs> in in shameless like he was trying so hard to like like get everybody together, like get their shit together. Um, yeah, there were so many so many good moments. Um, 
Yeah, so many good things to say. Episode about it, seven but, uh, was crazy. That's one of my favorite. Episode seven. Oh my god! Yeah, look, the final two episodes like that had me stressed. I feel like I was in Hell's Kitchen like <laughs> working with Chef Ramsay or some that shit. That was that was top notch acting right there. That was wonderful. Uh, that, everything yeah. was like a, it was like a concert. You know, everything has my perfect. blood pressure was rising. Right. Yeah, I know it was. <laughs> but do you think? Do you think like Sydney was justified though? Because I feel like I feel like she kind of did mess up. When she well, first of all, she put she put out that dish, right? She put out this risotto dish, mm. uh, even though Carmi said it wasn't ready. And I, you wouldn't normally wouldn't do that. You'd you'd have to get approval from your head chef before you do something like that. And you can see why because of the consequences of that. So I think I think like she was trying to, I don't know if she was just trying to show off like her talents or just like it was like a fuck you to Carmi or something. But like, and then because like and then when she started you know ringing the orders up, it started like everything just went arrive but you think like she was justified like because like carmy was stressed like i felt like i felt bad for carmy actually because he had to do all those orders and like he he was just wasn't ready for that you know you know for the most part i mean everyone has their own flavor no pun intended i guess pun intended <laughs> you know and i think carmy again he's classically trained and um but he doesn't want to be exactly like that main chef that uh was berating him um and everyone there is kind of like this family um and she's like the new piece uh part of that family um and it's funny because she's actually she seems more professional um the way how she speaks and like you know she just seems more professional of a chef um but he knows his shit and he has a lot like he's a lot like his brother um that kind of does stuff on a whim like he adapts and at that moment he was very stressed which is obviously like you know of course he's gonna be very stressed um I guess kind of, it, you know, it's a weird relationship because it's not really it's it's a really odd relationship because most of the time the relationship is just stressed. Right. Um, it's very odd. I, I guess I guess so. I, I think I added more to the ending as well um, when she came back. And I, I was like, mm -hmm. huh, Sydney and Marcus, like when he was over there, huh? The two people I oh. ship in the show <laughs> is Sydney and Marcus, uh, Neil, you know, the Neil, the, the big guy. And uh, fucking Richard. I don't know why. I just I had there was like this vibe. It was like Will and what's what's uh, Mike. Right. Will and Mike for Stranger Things. I don't know. It's fucking weird. <laughs> so that's so funny. Yeah, I kind of wish though, like she would have given like Carmi and Richie like an apology because I was true. fucked up when she was like when she was like, oh, like you're such a fucking loser, Richie. Like you're that's probably yeah. why your daughter doesn't talk to you. Like I thought that was fucked up. Like that's, that was like, though. Yeah. That was out of line for me. I was like, I was like, you should have like apologized for that. But yeah. I mean, they were under, under a lot of stress too. But I get it. But yeah, that that was such like a good, good like, you know, season finale. I love the style of the show so much. I love I love just like the dirtiness and like mm. the grittiness of it. Like I like when we see like like close up shots of like the kitchen, like certain corners, like it's all like dirty. Like you'll see like shit all over the floor. Or, like you'll see just like you know vegetables and knives lying around shit it just it adds so much to like the grunginess and i really love that about this show yeah well yeah especially and then the camera work complements it i think the music complements it a lot too everything it just complements each other i think this is i don't know what a perfect show is because some things aren't like always perfect but i feel like this was perfect um it, it was implemented really well like all aspects and they executed very well um and and i think the fact that they were like short episodes too added to that um you know yeah, it was really experimental to yeah me. It, was a, it was weird you know to see who yeah it was show. a fast show it was only like like eight episodes but i think yeah. i think i got invested into it really quickly like i feel like yeah like there wasn't an episode that felt like filler to me honestly like i was i was so into the characters and the environment that they were in and, and the stories that they told i i feel like it was a it was a quick eat if i had to, <laughs> to say <laughs> um but getting towards like the ending of the show because I, I thought it was such a sweet moment um where uh carmy finds and it was kind of confusing too we'll we'll talk a bit about it because you and i had some thoughts mm -hmm. about like what the brother did like as far as like leaving the inheritance for for Carmi, um it was sad though i i, I was like almost crying <laughs> like because i don't know if it was just the music but just like watching them all come together and just like start opening the cans mm -hmm. and then they're all like like happy it's like the one like sweet moment in the entire show where they're actually like coming together as a family but what did you think of the ending well yeah because of episode seven everyone was like on the brink of like leaving or just you know it was gonna all come down right it's make a break and and so now the brother who maybe Carmi thought was kind of an asshole and selfish to like kill himself, not even a note, nothing. Right. And he left 
a lot of money. And that was the point of the tomato cans. I thought it was really great. And the fact that the whole kitchen was smeared with tomato like sauce, um, I think it's kind of like this baptism of like a new era of this restaurant. And I think that was really beautiful. Um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was so ironic. Nice. <laughs> it was ironic because like in the beginning, he didn't want to put spaghetti sauce on the menu because he yeah. thought it was so outdated. And then when he saw the envelope that his uh, or the letter that his brother left him, with the spaghetti sauce recipe, I thought that was really sweet. Um, but I, I didn't understand like how he got all that money though. KSI, KSI. After he fought Logan Paul, he uh, <laughs> he said <laughs> it was some KSI like name. Or I got a feeling it's a money laundering business, and and John Berthold's character was sending the money there, and and you know it wasn't like this debt that we know of, but it was like you know a secret way because that's that's you know that's not tax money it's tax evasion yeah that's what it is basically. <laughs> yeah so i wonder how they're gonna like go about that too because that's like another way you know the irs gonna catch up well, eventually that, yeah that i mean that could also like present new problems for mm-hmm. season two because season two is is green lighted thank god because i love this show so much um so yeah it literally opens up a new new can of worms for them for for next season um but were there any moments like that you really like were fond of or like anything that like stood out to you from this show? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, again, the episodes were so short that it felt like just this one whole movie. Um, I really, I feel like the, the final episode, though, everything was great. Uh, I think the final episode really was like a nice bow on the present that we've received. So I thought it was really, really beautiful and tied up really well. I can't wait for season two. Um, but, but like, I want to know what were your favorite moments. And I also want to ask you one more question, um, which I think is an important one. What do you think the significance of the bear is, right? Because we saw the bear plenty of times. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah. So give us your thoughts on your favorite moments and plus significance of the bear. Uh, well, my favorite moments of the show, I think I had two favorite moments, uh, when he gave the Xanax to all the kids in oh, the yeah. cooler, <laughs> and they were all asleep. Right. I was cracking up. I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> and then Cicero is like, "Oh yeah, I, I guess I can deal with this." <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. That was so funny. Um, and but the the other one was um, when Richie went to prison. Oh yeah. I thought that was a really deep moment. Like, it just showed how like loyal, like he was to Carmi and how Carmi was to him. Like even though they're like they're at each at each other's throats like the whole show, like they're still family, right? So they kind of have to like be there for him. like because he spent all the parachute money. He said like it's like basically their their rainy day savings. Uh, he used to bail Richie out. Um, so yeah, that was a really sweet moment where like they were just like bonding because they I, they both loved Michael so much. You can tell like Michael was like I know you hate to say it, but the rock, <laughs> the rock of of the beef. Um. So I think they had their own way of like coping with his death. Um, um, yeah, and it was they were kind of like anta- antagonistic towards each other in the beginning because like they were fighting over like what why Michael left the restaurant to to Carmi. But I feel like at the end of, at, at the end of the show, like they they really came together sweetly. And it it just felt like they they were on the same page and they, and they they moved past their traumas and they they're trying to move forward with with um the bear, not the beef anymore. Right. Because once they found the inheritance, Monday. Uh, Carmi is like, yeah, we're we're gonna change this place up. Uh, the the beef is closed. Um, but stay tuned for the bear. So I think the bear, well, I mean, it's a play on their name also because their last name I think is Barazato or or some like some Italian name. I don't know. I think the bear just like it it represents the stress and the the pain of addiction, or like just like the stress overall that he's going through. Um, because it's like he wasn't getting like any sleep. Like he was actually like like having moments where like he was like zoning out and shit. This podcast, basically. Like, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I know it's a, that's an interesting question that you pose. How would what did you think the bear stood? I really think that the for? bear, yeah, it's like a little play on on the name too. But I think it's it's what you said. But I also think it's the restaurant. I think it's like taming the bear. Mm. Um, actually, like you know, because we did see flash or like little dream, like a dream sequence of like him by himself, like doing a cooking show. And then a bear just interrupts everything. Um, you can't really be at ease until you like capture this bear, until you tame it, right? And now you became it's kind of like warriors, like you make your first kill and you rub the blood on, on like your face or whatever. It's kind of like that. Um that that's how I see it at least. It's like which is a good ending because that means okay, you tame the bear. 
now this restaurant is the bear. And so now you're mm -hmm. the bear. So I found that kind of like, it's really nice. Like, like everything will go forward really well, except for the IRS. Cause I got a feeling they're going to like, so be in their <laughs> ass, like deep in there. Like it makes sense. That's the, the villain of every show is the IRS. <laughs> right. Well, everybody. But yeah, um, oh, sorry. Yeah. I was just going to say it's, it was a very rewarding ending. Um, but how would you uh, rate for this show? Oh yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I would rate it uh, out 10 out of 10 for sure. What about you? Yeah, I would agree. It was a very, it was a very well consistent show. I think it was definitely worth the watch. Um, and Hulu now, it just feels like Hulu is like stepping up their game as, as far as quality. Yeah. Um, I mean, FX has always had like really good shows too, right. but um, I feel like this show really like stood up. And yeah, yeah, give it a chance. I mean, whether or not you're into like like cooking shows, you know, definitely it's 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 a drama, so you'll enjoy it. And then if you're from Chicago too, like you'll appreciate it, like I did. Um, but yeah, 10 out of 10 for me. Um, but yeah, any final thoughts, Akron? No, that, yeah, that's about it. Um, yeah, guys, check it out. Hulu's, Hulu's starting to become really great. Um, we're going to review another Hulu show called The Handmaid's Tales, one of my favorite uh, favorite shows. I can't wait to do that. That's in September. Um, we'll review episode by episode. Um, as we usually do, if you're new to this channel, we usually do that for a lot of shows. We have a lot of content coming out. We have She-Hulk, a lot of Marvel stuff, a lot of Star Wars stuff. Um, we have the Prey movie that we're going to review. Uh, after this recording so this could be really fun i can't wait for you guys to see that um yeah dylan yeah thank you guys for tuning in and uh for this review uh, definitely check out our, our other content we have so much planned for this month um definitely check out our instagram page for updates our facebook page we have a tiktok and of course if you're following us on youtube you can also follow us on spotify and apple Podcasts as well um but thank you guys so much please leave a like a share comment anything helps this podcast grow every day uh we appreciate you guys so much so uh, i love you dude let it rip <laughs> <laughs> now i feel like to cry <laughs> see you <You're> guys right. <laughs>